From Nine on Your Side Sports, Cincinnati's longest-running sports talk show on television, this is Sports of All Sorts with Reggie Wilson. What up? Welcome to Sports of All Sorts. Super Bowl Sunday signifies two things. A new champion is crowned, but also, regrettably, the football season is officially over. On the same weekend that a new Hall of Fame class gets announced, I caught up with the Hall of Fame QB myself. My conversation with Kurt Warner, but coming up, we're going to talk Super Bowl first. I mean, of course, we got to talk Super Bowl. 49ers and Chiefs in Miami for Super Bowl 54. First quarter, Pat Mahomes fakes the option, takes it in himself for the first touchdown of the game. Chiefs lead seven to three. Second quarter, Jimmy Garoppolo under pressure, closes his eyes and throws one up, and that is never good. Picked off by Bashad Breeland, but the Niners come right back down the field. Garoppolo hooks up with his fullback, Kyle Juszczyk. And he hops into the end zone for six, ties the game at 10. Let's go to the third. Niners up three. Pat Mahomes. He throws an oh no, his first interception of the postseason. And that leads to this. Raheem Mostert goes in from a yard out. San Fran goes up 20 to 10. Fourth quarter for the ages after Mahomes throws another interception. He hits. Travis Kelsey wide open for the touchdown. Kelsey is the first Bearcats player to score a touchdown in a Super Bowl. How about that? It's a three-point game. Chiefs get a stop on D and go right back down the field. Mahomes hits Damian Williams, and he stretches over the pylon for the go-ahead score. It's 24-20. Defense gets another stop, and then Williams puts the game on ice. 38-yard touchdown. Chiefs score 21 unanswered in the fourth quarter. Mahomes is your MVP, and for the first time in 50 years, the Chiefs are Super Bowl champions with the 31-20 victory. Great. It was great, man. Worth the it's wait. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Love this guy right here, man. And all those guys that came before, love you too, man. And so this is what it's all about. What a great team, great coaches. Appreciate every bit of it. All right, joining me to talk about the Super Bowl is... Our guys, Bengals all-time leading scorer Jim Breach and Princeton head football coach Mike Daniels. Fellas, how you all doing? Doing great, Reg. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Coach, what's up? Well, it's an exciting day because of the Super Bowl, but sad to see this football season. I know. Yeah. I know. So speaking of that Super Bowl, what are your thoughts after the Chiefs uh, almost, maybe can you say improbable comeback victory? Well, the fact that they got down in all three games by, by double digits, mm -hmm. And we're able to come back and win handily mm -hmm. in every one of them. It says a lot about their perseverance, but uh, I think most about how good Patrick Holmes, Mahomes really is. Yeah. And think about it. They had a really pretty good quarterback in, in uh, Smith, Alex Smith, and Alex yeah. Smith yeah. that they could have very easily gone a different direction, mm -hmm. passed over on Patrick Mahomes, and I'm thinking they're not the Super Bowl champs today if they do that. No, not at all. What do you think, Coach? Well, just it just it speaks to um, how important quarterback play is mm -hmm. in, a, in an NFL. But I was just mesmerized by the the level of um, schematics and schemes that you talk about the offenses. You look on both sides and the play calls and the trick plays and the things how they dialed each other up. It was it was magnificent. You saw um, some of the best offensive schematics. Like you look at the first touchdown when you had a fake. Outside zone one way with speed option going the other way. It was, it was beautiful, and it was a great play to design, and it was also a great just uh, timing call. So it was, it was awesome to see that level of um, attention to detail and, and just that variety of, of offense of being played in a Super Bowl. It was, it, was, it was pretty good to see. Yeah, both of those head coaches known for being just the dynamic offensive mm -hmm. play callers. You gave them two weeks to prepare. They were, that's like giving a mad scientist. They were just, you know, in the lab cooking it up. Yes, indeed. And Pat Mahomes, he decided that he was not going to play his greatest game today. I guess he's human after all. He threw two picks, but ultimately was still able to lead his team in the fourth quarter. That 21-0 unanswered happened in the last six minutes of the game, and he won MVP, the youngest quarterback to ever win MVP in the Super Bowl. How awesome was that performance from him down the stretch, just staying resilient? So you look at it's 20 to 10. San Francisco is pretty much dominating both sides of the ball. They're running the ball, doing really well, but they're really shutting down. They've, they've turned the ball over a couple times. I think, man, San Francisco's kind of got the, they got figured out here. Yeah. No, 
Mahomes just rises to the occasion. And, and you see that with great players. Even though he hasn't had a great game up to that point, he found a way to raise the level of not only his play, but all the players around him. Mm -hmm. And by doing that offensively, you saw what it did on the defense. They really shut down San Francisco in, the, in, those, in those six minutes. Yeah. Completely shut them down and did some great things. And so uh, Mahomes did, you know, didn't have a phenomenal game, but winning the MVP, I think, was well-deserved just for what he did in that fourth quarter. And I want to talk about Travis Kelsey for a second. Six catches, 43 yards. He had that touchdown, like I said, first Bearcat to score a touchdown in the Super Bowl. How big is this guy? How, how important is he to that offense? Well, you see Travis is, is making his way kind of as potential Hall of Fame guy. Wow. And so he is, you start looking at the numbers and his impact, and you, 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 you cap it off with a Super Bowl win. And um, the first um, Bearcat in history to, to, to actually score a touchdown. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, he's on a, a pace to be one of the greatest uh, tight ends that ever played this game, and, it's, and we're seeing it live because he's he's a, he's a hometown guy. But it's but if you know if we're normal fans from other regions of this country, we would we would view him as probably the best number one or number two uh, tight end in this league. And so uh, it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, just watching him develop, coming in as a quarterback at the University of Cincinnati, and him being a Wildcat quarterback, and yeah. now him switching over to tight end and, and again being one of the greatest greatest, um, it's, 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 it's proud. It's, it's like um, we're, we're there with him. Yeah, and I wanted to real quickly get to Andy Reid. Man, the, the book was out on him. He can't win the big game. He finally wins the big game. What's his legacy? I know it's still growing. Well, I mean, I think it was a Hall of Fame legacy previous to this, yeah. but now that he has that win, that's a no-doubter. And by the time he gets done, he's going to probably be in the top five all-time and wins. Yeah. And you know, you look at his offense, I mean, his offenses have just been cutting edge for all the years he's been a part of it. So if you get drafted by the Chiefs and you're an offensive guy, you're pretty excited to go play for him. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it, you can tell his players love him. Yeah. And the players that play for him in Philadelphia, guys just love playing for him. He builds everybody up. He wanted to take none of the credit, give it to everybody else. And that's what a true coach is. I mean, he's, he's a... He's got a servant mentality. I mean, he's trying to bring everybody together For sure. to accomplish a goal, and they accomplished it tonight really well. For sure. Well, you guys are sticking around. We got plenty more with Coach Daniels and Jim Breach. We're going to talk about a little Bengals, a little Joe Burrow. That's been in the news this week, so stick around. Don't go away. Welcome back. Jim Breach and Mike Daniels still hanging out with me. Let's talk some Bengals. All right, so this week Joe Burrow says, I want to make sure I get this right, he wants to go to a great organization that's committed to winning Super Bowls. Some took it as a jab to the Bengals. How do you all see it? Uh, I, I think he was just being honest in terms yeah. of uh, what he expect. Um, I think he understands the landscape of where he's going to be drafted, and um, I think he would be proud to be, to be a Bengal. And so... Um, I mean, even with the rough year, the, the Bengals have been close. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, he's the type of player, type of level of quarterback in that position that will that could push you over over the top. We just talked about the Super Bowl being mm -hmm. a quarterback-driven uh, situation, and and so I think Joe Burrow has that type of talent. And so I don't think he was a, a was a shot towards the Bengals. I just think he was bold in telling you exactly what he was what he's expecting at the next level, and that's kind of been who he is. Um, throughout, you even go back through to Ohio State. That's mm -hmm. who he was. He was very confident in his ability. And then the same thing at LSU. He knew that he was going to win the, the national championship at LSU. He, he talked to you about that in the spring. And so that's just that's just that's the moxie that that, that young man has. You gotta so, love it. Absolutely. So you have got a guy. who, Yeah, he, he wants to go someplace. He wins. I think you sat him down with the coaching staff, Zach Taylor, all the coaches, and they talked through the scheming and. What their plans are, how they're going to bolster the offensive line. You got Jonah Williams going to have two first-round picks, basically. Mm -hmm. So when you start looking at all that and AJ Green coming back, and they probably want to add to what they're doing on offense. You throw a few, not even high-tiered tier, high -tiered free agents, but you throw some middle-tiered free agents in there to to help with the team. I think you got a team that's San Francisco 49ers, two and fourteen, four and twelve, thirteen and three. They're kind of trending in a similar direction. San Francisco didn't didn't get a lot of the stuff they have through trading, you know, crazy trades. 
They, they spent some money in free agency but, bit, and through yeah. the draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the they, draft and, they built up. And, and they lot. built it up and they built some stability. They built on the offensive and defensive lines. Mm -hmm. I think the Bengals have a chance to move in that direction. Uh, Joe Burrow could be a big piece of that. All right, so then Carson Palmer on the heels of that says that that was the reason why he felt like he wanted to leave. That's why he wanted out because he felt like the organization just wasn't dedicated to winning Super Bowls or even chasing after Super Bowls. How troubling is that from a former Bengal? After he leaves, they go to five straight playoffs. Mm. So if he's mm. playing quarterback with A.J. Green, with some of these guys that Andy Dalton was playing quarterback with, Who's to say, you know, they don't uh, take it to another level with an a quarterback as experienced as he is. He didn't give him, he never got a, got a chance to play with those guys. So was it Bear to go to Oakland when he was throwing interceptions right and left? Yeah, he went out and had fun in, in Arizona. Yeah. But he threw a lot of interceptions. We were seeing a lot of that trend here. So, yeah, the guy was is an unbelievable talent, mm -hmm. but he never saw it through. If he had stayed and seen it through... He'd have had five years in the playoffs, potentially. Hmm. Hmm. Well, so Boomer Sison says that it would be corporate suicide for the Bengals not to take Burrow with the number one pick, unless they get some major haul for that pick. Is you that get, how you see You it? get a major haul. Mm -hmm. You get three from Miami. Woo. Miami moves up, takes Joe Burrow. You go down to five. And maybe you get Herbert or Tagliavo, whichever, Tua, one of those two. Joe Burrow takes Miami to the Super Bowl. <laughs> was it worth it, right? Yeah, was it worth it? No. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If you gotta, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, I think you, you have to. I think you have to take Joe um, just with how everything's set up, where he's from, how, he, how he's cut. Mm -hmm. he, he's a Midwest guy. He's an Ohio guy. Well, you, can, you have to take Joe Burrow. That's just my opinion. And do you think that, you know, like you said, Coach, a franchise quarterback can do great things for a team on the field and kind of elevate their play. You know, Patrick Mahomes was kind of the reason why they won, even though he did throw those two picks. But he had them in it. Three straight games where they overcome double-digit leads. That's what a franchise quarterback can do for you. Is that what you see in Joe Burrow? Absolutely. So the guy plays in the SEC. Mm -hmm. They played... Five top ten defenses, mm -hmm. lit them all up. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't matter. Clemson, nobody was doing anything. They've given up 11 points a game. The yards they were giving up was was minuscule. Yeah. And he went out and just lit them up. And yet, early in the game, if you remember, he struggled. Mm -hmm. The first three drives, they were really struggling. Found his rhythm. Boom. Game was over. Mm -hmm. Just like Deshaun Watson lit up Alabama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Cleveland decides they don't want him. But he goes to Houston, and, and he the, raises their level. Play. Exactly. That guy can raise the level of the other players around him because from what I've read, what, what I've heard, his leadership ability is off the charts. And that's a huge part of being a big-time quarterback. Mm -hmm. And you basically said it. Is there any reason why they should take anybody else with that number one pick? No, not at all. And, and then so you, 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 you got two elements of it. You got the talent, mm -hmm. and again, the 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 thing that you have that the kid is from this area, and so when you add the two pieces together, it's a it's a no brainer. Yeah, he's, he's a he's a he's his skill set is adaptable to different systems. Right, and then again, he's a he's an Ohio guy. He will he will be beloved here in Cincinnati. He will he would really embrace mm -hmm. Cincinnati, the culture. Of Cincinnati and what's the the Cincinnati? What is Ohio about? And um, that's why you have to take him for those two pieces. It, it's, it's a no brainer. Yeah, it's, it's a no brainer. Just don't give him any skyline. Well, right? <laughs> I hope they do right by Andy Dalton. I know yeah, Dick Tobin has, has mentioned that that they would, whatever that means, whether it's a trade or uh, I don't know if they keep him for an insurance policy. Yeah. But hopefully they would tra they, they traded Boomer after yeah. Klingler came in, and hopefully they would do something for. For Andy like that, if yep. that's the direction they end up going. All right, Jim. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time. Coming up, we're talking with Kurt Warner. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now that the Super Bowl is over, we can turn our attention to the future here in Cincinnati. And a lot of fans believe the future is Joe Burrow. 
who better to talk quarterbacks than with the Super Bowl champion and Hall of Famer? Got a chance to catch up with Kurt Warner this week. Check out our conversation. Joining me is Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner from Lowe's hometown. Kurt, thanks for taking the time. How are you this morning? You know what? I am great uh, down here in Miami. Super Bowl experience. You mentioned it. Lowe's hometown. Uh, a little promotion that they're doing for all those fans that can't come down to Miami to watch the game, but to bring the game home to them by putting together the best spot for everybody to come watch Super Bowl. And so you'll see behind me, right? We got a cool one for Cincinnati, the Bengal boat behind us, the, the river boat behind here. But just to inspire fans at home to go out to Lowe's, go online to Lowe's.com backslash NFL, get your Bengals gear or whoever your team is, Chiefs, 49ers, and put together the best Super Bowl party for this Sunday's big game. That's awesome. So Kurt, I have a little bit of a personal story for you. So you don't know me, probably don't remember this, but I grew up in St. Louis. I'm a huge St. Louis Rams fan. Okay. You actually went to go see a movie with your wife, Brenda, Miami Vice. I was there. Afterwards, I ran up to you asking for an autograph, but I didn't have anything for you to sign. And so you gave me one of your cards, and I just remember being just over the moon okay. that, I, that I met Kurt Warner. So this is, this is awesome getting a chance to talk to you today. Well, man, it's, it's good to catch up. It's a small world, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad we had a chance to at least cross paths uh, for, for a moment or two uh, back in St. Louis. For sure, for sure. So here in Cincinnati, the hype is real on Joe Burrow. He obviously had one of the best seasons for a college quarterback. You've watched some of his film, some of his tape. What do you like from his game? <clears throat> There's a lot to like about his game. He's a mobile guy that can make plays with his legs, with his arm. Obviously, we saw what he did in the pocket, and you, you mentioned it. I mean, people are arguing that it may have been the greatest college season we've ever had. The most surprising part is we really didn't know a whole lot about him mm -hmm. coming into the season. And to me, that I guess that's the one question you have is, is what we saw this year just kind of a magical ride, or is that what he is going to be for the rest of his career? And, and there is so much to like about this young guy, and obviously all signs lead to he's going to be that number one overall pick, and he's going to find himself in Cincinnati. But I love the young man that he is, the character that he has, and that to me is where it always starts when you're talking about a leader, you're talking about a franchise quarterback. You want to have a guy that can represent your organization the right way both on and off the football field. And I think they have that in this young man. It seemed like it was a, a meteoric rise before the season started. He was not on the radar and now he's a potential first round pick. The Bengals went two and 14 last season. Is he the answer or would you take someone else number one? Well, I tell you what you talk about is uh, is rise to fame and I truly believe that all quarterbacks are system quarterbacks and what that means is you got to find the right fit for what you do well. And I believe that's what we saw on Joe Burrow this year was that he found the right fit. They brought in an offense coordinator that really fit his skill set. And so if Cincinnati takes him as their quarterback, that becomes the true key is you know he can play at a high level. Now you've got to make sure you fit the system and you fit the players around the quarterback. That's always the key to those guys having success. So uh, I'm excited to see what he will be at the next level, whether it's in Cincinnati or wherever. But I do believe that's always the key to stability at that position is finding the right system that fits them and then building around that. Kurt, fans here want some wins and they want to get back to the playoffs. You obviously were on the 98 Rams team that went 4-12 and 12, and then the year later they went to the Super Bowl. What does it take for a team to get over the top after a, a bad season? Isn't that the beautiful thing about the NFL is that <laughs> we see this all the time. Worst to first, we see teams that go from 4-12 and 12, like the 49ers, you mentioned our Rams team, all the way to the Super Bowl. So things can change very, very quickly in this NFL because there's so much parity. Uh, but I do believe that it's about getting key players in key positions that can lead the rest of the organization. So much of it is about building a culture, building the right kind of culture, a culture to win. Uh, and it starts with having the right players in those key positions. So drafting is always key. Free agency bringing in key pieces to that puzzle. And that's going to be the key for Cincinnati moving forward and into next year, starting with that number one overall pick. Reggie, it's great catching up, man. I appreciate the time this morning. Thanks so much, Kurt. God bless you.
All right, that was a lot of fun. I had so much fun with that, if you couldn't tell. We'll be right back to wrap up the show. Welcome back. After our program is in-depth with Graham Benzinger. He's keeping the Super Bowl vibes going tonight. This is a special Super Bowl edition of In-Depth. From Jerry Rice to Drew Brees. You know, you're not really knowing what to expect other than I can't believe it, we did it. The biggest names on their biggest moments. I wouldn't have done crap if I didn't have my center up there or Booze or Snail, my teammates. All that's coming up next and in depth right here on Nine on Your Side. Thanks, Graham. Looking forward to that. Well, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun, but we got to go. I'd like to thank Jim Breach, Mike Daniels, and Kurt Warner for joining me tonight and to my village who helped put this all together. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed the show. Let's do it again next Sunday. Until then, thanks for watching. Have a good night and a very blessed week.